the wait is finally over. Earlier today, we saw the release of Fallout 76's Year 2 roadmap. This is big. Since roughly the start of this year, we've large in part been in the dark as to what's next for Fallout 76 after Wastelanders. But now we have a pretty good idea of where the next six months at least of this game will take us, and perhaps even a bit further. In this video, I'm going to go over all of the new information we just got, as well as really break it down. Quite a few things that were mentioned actually have some additional context from third-party sources, or have been mentioned in the past. I'm going to try and put it all together so you don't miss anything. But also, to celebrate the release of the roadmap, I actually have this pretty cool Fallout-themed mug on my merch store. It was just recently added, but even further, on the merch store overall, to celebrate the release of the roadmap, you can get 10% off by using the coupon code ROADMAP. So original, I know. Looking at the roadmap overall, it's interesting because it seems like it is the 2020 roadmap, and hypothetically, doesn't actually go into 2021. So all this new content could be coming in just six months. Because yeah, there's actually only six and a half months left in the year overall, I know, that's crazy. And based on this, it would mark a really packed year for Fallout 76, significantly more active than we saw last year. And I gotta say, I absolutely love the design Bethesda used with the roadmap. I thought last year's was awesome, but this one too is just really cool. Just aesthetically, I found both of them to be quite pleasing. There's a lot to break down with this, but starting things off, let's just look at what's coming to Fallout 76 in the near future, this summer. One of the big new additions with summer is seasons, and it'll take a while to talk about that, so let's first go over some of the other things that are on the way. We can see that legendary perks are coming, here simply described as new high-level perks. One of the things you'll notice with this roadmap is a lot of the things are kind of vague. We don't have the same written descriptions like we got last year, or even concrete dates outside of just summer, which summer again is the first phase of this one. Legendary perks fortunately though is something we've heard a lot about, basically you've been hearing about it for a year now, and although the system has received some redesigns, functionally what this will do is make it so every 50 levels, and that is starting at level 50 of course, you can pick an additional legendary perk per special stat. So seemingly each special stat will have several. In this particular image, we could see at least three for the endurance special stat, and it looks like they actually have different ranks. And it's basically just meant to be a very high tier version of that perk. Only coming once every 50 levels makes it so these will be quite expensive. To just max out this one perk card, you'll need to be level 200. Although, one of the cool benefits of these are they actually carry over to new characters on the same account. So let's say on your main level 500 character, you do have a ton of great legendary perk cards. When you start a new one, you'll be able to carry those over and instantly get a bonus. Even further, in the past, Bethesda has described that you can spend accumulated levels. So when this update goes live, assuming what they said in the past holds true, if you're level 300, you should immediately be able to make six unlocks as far as legendary perk cards go. As far as this one, we could barely see on screen here. It looks like it's called Heavy Duty, and it makes it so you take 17% reduced damage when wearing heavy armor as a set. So like all the same pieces of the heavy armor. That in and of itself is quite good, but if you actually have the max rank of that, it could make it so you're basically invincible. All the legendary effects on an armor set, but then also at rank 4, assuming it scales linearly, 70% reduced damage would be insane. And assuming the blue coloring here is actually represented of the endurance special stat, not just random, it would make this legendary perk system pretty interesting in that you actually have many and difficult choices to make. Most of us aren't going to be several hundred levels in rank right now because that's just hard to get to. So you'll really have to think about which perk card and for which special you actually want. And this will incentivize starting new characters just to hit level 100 because it's much more easier than going from 200 to 300 to 400. Next up, we do have public teams, this being the ability to find teams with ease. Bethesda actually expanded on this in the AMA, describing how it would be a new team system somewhat similar to a public looking for a group system, wherein team leaders will appear on the paper map, seemingly so it'll be obvious, hey, I could just join this guy and party up, and there'll be additional incentives to play as a group, and you'll even get buffs while playing events in a team like this, or during other things like dungeons or questing. It's not totally clear, just based off this, if all of those ideas carry through, but considering the AMA was only a couple of weeks ago, I would assume most of those are holding true. Then we do have a colossal problem. We've heard quite a bit about this one, and it's basically going to be a way to spawn the Wendigo Colossus with a nuke by nuking a particular area, that area being the Monago Mine. Although, despite that being the extent of many people's knowledge, there's actually a lot more to this. It is described as a new legendary boss event, and that is very much so true. So the short, non-super spoilery version of what we know from data mines, 
is that you're going to have to do a short quest, and then after that, when you nuke the Monaga Mine, you will spawn a named Wendigo Colossus that is actually stronger than the typical Wendigo Colossus. So think of it more like a Queen Colossus rather than just a typical Scorched Beast. If you don't want to hear the spoiler part from the data mines, you can click ahead here. But from data mines, we know that first, you're going to have to do something known as something sentimental, a new mini quest to go along with it. The Fallout Wiki right now basically has all these steps broken down, but we'll have to find a way into the Monaga Mine because an individual, Maggie Williams, has asked us to retrieve her father's pocket watch which was left in the mine, but then it all came crashing down. To actually get into the mine, because in-game right now, that's not something you could really do, you're going to have to launch a nuke on the area because this will remove the rubble so you could actually enter. From there, you could actually go in the mine, get the pocket watch, except the way you get the pocket watch is you're going to have to kill a Wendigo Colossus, the Wendigo Colossus being Earl Williams, the father of Maggie. So you are in effect fighting the mutated Earl Williams, who is now a Wendigo Colossus. But even the fight is going to be a little bit different. Basically, this Wendigo Colossus is going to go around to four different meat piles to heal himself. So one of the parts of the fight is you could put irradiated dynamite in the meat piles to damage him and stop him from healing. But if he gets to all four meat piles, it's described how he'll get angry and perhaps get some buffs to do additional damage to you if you don't finish him off quick enough. So the fight would get harder as it goes on. He'll drop some unique items as well as the pocket watch, then he could return it to Maggie and have some choices about how you want to handle the situation. So this all sounds really cool. I'm really happy to see this type of event get added in. It's kind of unique. Although, one of the interesting parts about this is it's not totally clear if this is a permanent or temporary addition. Considering how much work it seems like is going into this, I assume permanent, but in the roadmap when Bethesda describes this, they compare it to the Treasure Hunter event as well as Meat Week and the Fosnot Parade. All of those are temporary events. So maybe a colossal problem will only be available for a week or maybe only a month. Although outside of that, as I mentioned, we'll also see the return of both Fosnot and Meat Week. We had these last year. Although we know that Fosnot is getting some changes and upgrades, hopefully we'll see some new mess, and we know there'll at least be some new Atomic Shop items around this, but even further, some new drops from the event. Like the Marine Helmet is reportedly going to be something we can get from this event, so hopefully there'll be some additional incentive to complete it for this year outside of just enjoyment. We don't really know if similar changes will come to Meat Week, if it'll have new or different rewards or any twist on the event, but that's something else to keep in mind. They list community challenges here. I assume this is going to be like Project Clean Appalachia, where if the player base as a whole completed certain milestones in a certain amount of time, they would get rewards from Bethesda, which actually seems pretty cool. It was a fun event to participate in, and the community really did band together, killing something like 26,000 Scorch Beasts in just 24 hours. Although one thing that is interesting, there are a couple of things not listed here. From the old roadmap, we know that in the next week, we're getting Backpack Vanity updates, which we still don't exactly know what that is, as well as the Treasure Hunter event and Allied Dress Up are all seemingly right around the corner. But then we transition to the big thing on its way to Fallout 76, that with seasons as well as some overhauls to the challenge system of the game. And although this is the big thing coming in the near future, it'll now be a permanent addition. We'll see it all throughout the rest of the DLC cycle, not only this year, but seemingly subsequent years also. But Bethesda describes this new Seasons concept as basically a Season Pass or Battle Pass for Fallout 76. Similar, but also different to how other games handle this. It'll begin very soon in Update 20. I think some people might have been getting confused with this. We don't actually know when Update 20 is. The next update, the one that's likely coming out this Tuesday, is Update 19. Update 20 might be three weeks away or might be a month and a half away. We have no idea right now. And with this update, the seasons will be integrated into Fallout 76, kicking off season one. And you'll be able to find this new season one map on the main menu in Fallout 76. Really what these seasons are is a way for players to kind of stay entertained with Fallout 76, always have something to do, but also make Bethesda some money. You'll find this board game map, which is actually only the theme of the first one. That's the Captain Cosmo's board game theme. Subsequent ones apparently will have a different theme, which is kind of cool. You'll start at spot 1 out of 100 on this board game map. And functionally, what it is, is you do certain things in game, actually quite a wide variety of things, and you'll accumulate points that will rank you up up to 100 levels. Each rank up, you progress one spot on this board game, and each spot has a different prize for you to claim. 
The actual way to rank up is by accumulating score points in game. And we can see in this little image that at rank five, it'll be a thousand score points. The predominant way you're going to earn score points are by completing daily or weekly challenges. So of course, these are already existing aspects of Fallout 76. Right now, many of the daily or weekly challenges will award you Adam, but with the season's integration, this will change. So now instead of earning Adams, you'll earn score points. But even further, the actual theme or what the challenges require of you will also change somewhat. It's going to be more focused around maintaining that natural gameplay loop. Right now, some of the challenges might be take a picture in a nuke zone while naked. Difficult and abstract things that you wouldn't do unless you're doing it for the challenge. Conversely, once this update goes live, it'll be more natural things. Kill a legendary creature, level up five times. Things you'll probably be doing in your traditional gameplay loop. And it also seems like they're going to be increasing the number of challenges we have on a daily or weekly basis. Although an important note, the lifetime challenges will still be there, and they'll still give those hyper low atom rewards. Completing daily and weekly challenges are the main way to progress your rank and earn score points, but alternatively, you could also earn just experience in game, so just kind of playing the game normally, completing public events in Fallout 76, as well as some of the nuclear winter daily challenges. And specifically, that is not the adventure mode daily challenges, but the nuclear winter daily challenges. They mention how in the future, they hope that daily challenges and quests in adventure mode will also be counted, as well as other repeatable content that's coming to the game in the future. And the way this is all worded, it really seems like the daily and weekly challenges are going to be the predominant way to earn score and probably give you the most, while all of those other things will still give you some, just not nearly as much. Alright, so now you're earning score, you're starting to rank up, what exactly does this mean? So as you can see here, on each individual tile you'll earn something. Some of the things they mention are unique outfits, camp items, weapon skins, power armor paints, consumables like repair kits, per card packs, atoms, script, caps, gold bullion, and even further, how the rewards overall will get better as you increase in rank. And you can actually see this just by looking at the map. There's going to be a good amount of cosmetics that you could only earn by leveling up in the season system. It seems like these bigger icons are those unique rewards, and you can see towards the end of the map, there's just more of them. In the first section, we could see two. In the middle section, we could see four. While in the last section, we could see eight. But ranking up gets more difficult as you progress. They describe how in the earlier ranks, it'll only take one hour or so, while at the later ranks, it'll be much closer to two hours. But there'll also be certain rewards at certain milestones such as hitting rank 25, 50, 76, etc. And when you actually complete this whole map, when you reach the end at rank 100, you actually get a season one bundle. This is going to be Captain Cosmos themed, as that is the overall theme of season one. And you can see several of the items you could earn through this. These are the ones you could get by hitting that final rank, but there are other ones that you'll get all throughout. Although these rewards are a limited time only. The seasons will be 10 weeks or so, and at the end of the season, you'll be locked out, no longer able to progress, but also, if you didn't get some of those unique rewards, you just may never be able to get them. Bethesda has done this somewhat in the past with Nuclear Winter unique rewards, and they mention how they're exploring ways to incorporate some of this in different ways in the future. It seems large in part, if you want the rewards, you're going to have to hit a certain rank, which could take a while. Hitting 100 levels in 10 weeks is probably going to require a good couple of hours of work per day in game. Although one important note, they do mention, at least as of right now, old Atomic Shop items will not be included with this. So this should almost all be new content, at least for the most part. It's not just going to be a rehash of a bunch of old stuff being distributed in a different way. They plan to do four seasons per year, but of course this year only three. And each of these seasons will have a different theme and unique rewards to go along with it. Although there'll be a deeper dive into the system overall as we approach update 20. So probably the next couple of weeks and one of the inside the vaults. But then comes the more controversial part of this, and that is with its monetization. This isn't just a free new feature. It is mostly free, and you can play it, at least the first one, totally for free. Although, after the first two weeks of this being available, so two weeks after the season starts, you'll be able to then spend 150 atoms to rank up once. And it doesn't seem like this changes, so even though the ranking up process becomes a bit harder towards the end, it requires more score points, it'll still only be 150 atoms, which roughly translates to $1.50. 
and you could progress through the entire thing this way. If you just want to buy your way through after two weeks, you can do that. It'll just be 15,000 atoms or roughly $150. Although you can't skip ranks. You still have to go linearly one to two, three, four. And one of the lines that actually has people concerned is Bethesda in this says, as mentioned above, you'll be able to take part in our inaugural summer season for free as soon as it begins with update 20. And some are wondering that, is it going to be one of those things where the first one's free, but to actually participate in subsequent seasons, it'll cost money. Thus far, it hasn't been confirmed one way or the other. I imagine if it will be free for all seasons, they'll kind of specify or clarify, especially if a discussion around this really blows up. Although in the past, like when talking about Wastelanders, they constantly referred to it as a free update because I think some people just thought it would be a paid DLC and they might just be overusing that word even though it doesn't actually mean future seasons would be paid. Frankly, I think that would be really dumb and there's enough monetization and just the quick rank up. Which speaking of, that quick rank up is pretty interesting because that of course now does hypothetically mean for 150 atoms at different points, you will have access to buy a lot of things in game. The typical stuff you could find in the atomic shop like some of the weapon and armor skins that are unique to this season but of course also caps gold bullion script perk card packs etc etc all of the things you could naturally get through this so in turn with that pay to advance mechanic it's also probably the most pay to win mechanic we've seen thus far but of course, one of the other big parts around this is the changes to now what will be legacy challenges. Since challenges no longer award you atoms, but rather award you score, you're almost getting less choices as a consumer. You'll be receiving less atoms overall via this system, as far as raw atoms. You'll roughly be getting the same amount of content in the sense that you'll at times be unlocking things like skins that you could typically buy for atoms, and at other times perhaps even just getting a small amount of atoms themselves, but you do lose some of that autonomy. You're not just having, let's say, a thousand atoms in your account at the end of a month. You might have a couple hundred atoms as well as five new skins that you may or may not want. And in that regard, it's not totally clear what value is associated with some of these other rewards. How many gold bullion are you going to get? How many atoms are you going to get? Those will be important factors in determining the value of this overall and how high it could get towards the end. But really with the system, it's going to be another way for Bethesda to have consistent revenue and actually revenue where users are buying atoms themselves. With Vault 76 right now, from time to time, something really cool would pop up on the Atomic Shop, so many users who banked atoms from doing challenges would just drop their atoms then. Now, that's not really going to be a thing. Rather, as the season is coming to a close and you realize, uh-oh, there's still a ton of cool rewards that I'm not quite qualified for, users will probably go out of their way to actually purchase bundles of atoms as well as spending whatever they have to get to the end. Like Bethesda showed off before, at the end there is a cool bundle you earn and only earn once per season as per that season, unique items from the season. If you're at rank 95 on that final day and just not feasible for you to actually get to the end, you'll probably just pay your way there. Or I'm sure most people who got that close did that much grinding already would just buy their way to the finish. I would bet just due to the psychological framework of this one, it's going to really generate a lot of atoms for Bethesda. A lot of people who will do a good chunk of the grind but not be able to finish it in time, or even further, people who like collecting things in game and don't want to miss out on some of these limited time rewards. We saw in the past how involved in the grind people have gotten as far as nuclear winter awards that were only limited time, especially when it comes down to the wire. And one of the other important notes around this, it is yet an additional grind to just consistently be there with Fallout 76. Going the free route, you'll have to play the game a couple of hours each day to rank up at a consistent rate. But as I mentioned how rank ups towards the start are roughly one hour, towards the end roughly two hours, 100 rank ups in total, so let's just say hypothetically, it'll take you roughly two hours per day across 70 days to actually max this out. Now for me, as far as my personal opinion on this goes, I honestly don't really mind it. I know there's definitely going to be some controversy around this, especially if future seasons do have an initial entry price, which I think is dumb and Bethesda shouldn't do, I don't agree with that. But in its current form, how there is a free way to do this or a non-free way to do this, I think a lot of people will just kind of enjoy it. It does somewhat solve that endgame problem, as now you're just consistently going to have something to work towards. And especially as you get to the end, there's going to be a lot of skins or cool cosmetics that people will want. Large in part, the content via this is either minor, just a few script, gold bullion here or there, or it's just things that were already on the Atomic Shop. 
For me personally, I just don't see myself completing these seasons. I'm not going to grind endlessly just to get this one skin that's only available for a limited time. If this is one of those features Bethesda is integrating to keep hardcore fans playing on a daily basis and happy with something to do, but also generate some income to actually make cool new feature additions and storylines for the game, I'm kind of okay with it. It definitely is one of the more tame additions as far as additional microtransactions, at least based off our understanding thus far. This is one of those things that really doesn't take that much away from the game. You will have less atoms that you could play with if you are somebody who grinded out those daily challenges, but otherwise you could completely ignore this, just play the free new updates and the game will basically be the same as it is right now. You will only be missing out on some limited time cosmetics. And that of course is assuming the only unique things from this are cosmetics. There of course are things like gold bullions, but you could get them the other way. So I think for me at least, it'll be something I mess around a bit with initially. I'll play it as I play some of the other updates to the game, but I'm not going to pay my way through it or sit here daily just to get that one skin at the end. I don't really care that much about cosmetic skins in the game. And overall, I think it'll be a good addition to the game. It does kind of shift the direction of the game slightly. But again, it is completely ignorable, and I think it will really cater to some of those more hardcore players, and those who just want to pay their way once they get to the final stage and can't be bothered anymore. So that's just the summer and the initial update. All the stuff we could expect in the next couple of months. After that, we're also getting a fall and winter update. This will come with resets to seasons, but even further, quite a bit more. It seems like the core focus of the fall update is going to be One Wasteland. If you're not familiar, One Wasteland is basically a renormalization of all enemies, and we see here their loot also. So let's say you're a level 1, and then you're playing with a level 50, both of you will do roughly the same damage to that enemy. It'll be scaled to your individual levels on your screen, so it'll be much easier to play with friends. If you're clearing through an early region with one of your low level friends, it's not like any of the enemies will be low level anymore. They'll all be attuned to your level and also to his level. I personally really like this. I think it'll be a good addition to this multiplayer fallout and probably should have been here from the start. One of the odd things to me though, it feels like this should have came with Wastelanders because right now is when you're getting a lot of people playing together. And nothing about these summer updates really make it seem like there's going to be a huge wave of new players like we just saw. I would imagine Wastelanders probably bring the single largest wave of new players, where subsequent DLCs will have a lot of returning players and some new players, but not even close to that initial wave we saw with Wastelanders. But we're also getting Steel Dawn, and this is big because we get confirmation that yes, in fact, the Brotherhood of Steel are returning to Fallout 76. This was teased in the AMA. When I read it in the AMA, I honestly kind of wrote it off. I didn't think they would actually go this route. I thought they were just holding out that maybe at some point in the distant future. But in fact, just later this year, we will get our intro to this. The interesting part is this Steel Dawn seems like it's going to be a smaller experience. Coming this fall, it'll be a smaller scale questline introducing us or maybe laying the framework for the actual big Brotherhood of Steel update. It seems like this is going to be Act 1 or maybe the prologue to the larger Brotherhood of Steel questline that with Fractured Steel coming in winter. It's not totally clear what Steel Dawn will do. Maybe we'll have a few Brotherhood soldiers come, but like not the full army quite yet. Perhaps we'll clean up Appalachia and prepare it for their return or do something along those lines. I would assume this one won't be a full scale Wastelander sized story, but a smaller scale experience. But when it comes to this, I actually really love how Bethesda is handling it having one more introductory quest that comes out in fall, and then a few months later, having the large, massive questline involving the Brotherhood. We'll get to see the progression and actual changes in the world, and likely as a result of us doing something in Steel Dawn. We also see daily ops for the first time, and it simply is described as earn scaling rewards. We know daily ops are going to be dungeons. This was actually mentioned by the project lead on Twitter. Back in the AMA, they described something that may be this. We're actively prototyping a system where we'll be incentivized certain dungeons to be played on a rotating basis for unique rewards. It also seems like daily ops will be something that's timed. On the winter part of the roadmap, we can actually see the daily ops with a little timer on them. And overall, based off what we hear, it seems like it's basically going to be the Vault 94 Vault Raid, but different, a different take on that. And I'm really happy to see. It would be cool if these daily ops take place, let's say, each week in a different dungeon in Fallout 76. Or maybe even we see the addition or reopening of Vault 94 or other vaults with a different flavor, different themes. And maybe each has their own unique rewards, very similar to the vault armors that we saw with the vault raids. Then we do have the Season 2 refresh as well as the bombs drop event. 
Season 2 has a nuke symbol, so I thought, hey, maybe it's going to be a nuclear-themed season, but so does Season 3, so perhaps that's just the placeholder symbol they're using. But as far as bombs dropped go, I have no idea. If this is going to be another limited time event, probably involve nuking something, I guess, but at this point, it's literally all high-level speculation. And then last but not least, the big one, the full return of the Brotherhood of Steel with Fractured Steel, coming this winter. For all of this, we don't actually have concrete dates, just summer, fall, winter. And although this roadmap is titled the 2020 roadmap, I do really wonder if the Fractured Steel update is coming in 2020, or is it going to start at the end of 2020 and carry over into Q1 2021? It'd be really cool if all this new content comes out in 2020, right at the end, perhaps November or December. There really isn't a huge time frame as far as winter goes in that season, but if they manage to get all of this out in just the next six months, it'll be a big deal. That'd be a lot of content for this game, and a lot more than we've seen in the past. As far as this new Brotherhood of Steel quest, we don't know much about it. It seems like this will be the next big quest line for Fallout 76. They mention how the Brotherhood of Steel will return to Appalachia in search of new technology, and how this will bring new NPCs, additional quests, as well as allies. And of course, how it's going to be a continuation of Steel. Dawn, which as I mentioned before, I really, really love. The interesting part about this is we don't really know what kind of time frame Bethesda Game Studios is working on when it comes to updates like this. With Wastelanders, it took roughly a year, but Wastelanders had to implement all of these systems, the dialogue tree, as well as all the other new features to build off of. So though Fractured Steel may make edits or add on to some of those, large in part, the framework is there. So be curious to see the size and scope of this one as well as the release date and it'll give us a good idea as to how fast Bethesda can pump out some of this single player-esque content. Outside of that we're getting perk loadouts pretty far away all the way in winter. I think a lot of us would have rather to see that as a summer release, especially considering mods already do it pretty well. But then other things that look really interesting with camp shelters. It looks like what this will be is basically a way for you to place a door or item at your camp that'll actually be a full on interior. So perhaps you'll have a basement or just a structure overall that you can go inside of with a load screen. What this means though is, hypothetically, you could build a lot more on the inside of this, hopefully making the camp budget a bit larger for you, but even further giving you more in the way of customization, because you could change things on that interior that you couldn't typically change in the outside world. It might make it sometimes a little bit more obnoxious going to camps, you're going to have to fast travel there, get the load screen, but then a second one to go inside, but this should hopefully be a big update to the system and a really healthy one. Expeditions is another one we really don't know anything about, just new repeatable missions, it sounds cool. I have a feeling Expeditions might be one of the things the Brotherhood of Steel bring for us. Perhaps it'll be the daily quest equivalent for the Brotherhood of Steel DLC. They come to the area and then they'll send us on expeditions to get things and as a result we can get unique rewards. Although when it comes to that content, it's very far away and it's all speculative. And then outside of that, of course, we have Season 3, New Daily Ops, as well as the Holiday Scorched Return, another one that we saw at the end of last year. So overall, as far as the roadmap holistically goes, I actually found a couple of things interesting. One of the first things, there are things coming, or seemingly coming, that are just not on here. You saw no mention of pets, apparently respecking was planned, or at least in the AMA they mentioned it. Multi-factor authentication, although that one's not surprising, it's not as attractive to put on a roadmap. They mentioned event system changes, so if you don't get a hit on a legendary enemy, you can still loot the legendary. But even something like a new multiplayer mode or updates to Nuclear Winter, the Battle Royale mode. I assume there'll be something as far as that mode goes, but I'm just really surprised we saw literally nothing here, unless one of those obscure or mysterious events actually is in fact an update for Battle Royale. I really want a Base Wars mode, and I was really, really confident we would see that on this, but I was totally wrong. This does seem to implicate that the Bethesda Game Studios Dallas studio is no longer working on 76, but rather fully on Starfield now. They were the people to make Nuclear Winter, and if they were working on something big, I suspected a new multiplayer mode, we would have basically seen it here. I'm actually really excited for the future of this game. As far as the season stuff, as I mentioned before, it's cool. I think it's a healthy addition. It'll really make the game more fun for select users, but it's not something super appealing to me. It is interesting as now there are additional grinds for Fallout 76, not only the gold bullion grind, but even further you're going to consistently have a seasons grind. It's incentivizing players to either buy atoms to get through it or play on a regular daily or weekly basis because you have to complete those challenges on a daily or weekly basis. I also think it's interesting how that'll just always be in the background. We don't know exactly how many new things are coming with this, but even just based off that little list I made earlier, 
we saw 14 new items that seemingly are all new unique cosmetics that you could get as a result of season one, as well as some of the ones as the final rewards. There's going to be a good amount of new items Bethesda is going to have to make just for the seasons, and then in addition, they still have to maintain the atomic shop. A lot of work's going to go into this overall, so it'll be interesting to see how that balance changes. Will the atomic shop see less updates because more content's going to seasons? The seasons kind of are an atomic shop in a way, just a free alternative or has a free alternative. I like that they're bringing back the Brotherhood of Steel. I would like to see them explore some of those older factions also though, or just even introduce new ones. The Brotherhood of Steel are interesting, but we've heard about them a lot. So hopefully they get their own unique identity here, not just more stories around the same themes that have already been explored in past games. And hopefully in their return, we see maybe a smaller other faction come back too, or just a newly introduced one. Fallout 76 is uniquely positioned in being just now 26 years after the bombs dropped. There's a lot of cool things they could do with that concept, and I'm curious to see where they go with it, if they even use it at all. Even further, I wonder how the Brotherhood's going to fit in from a more lore perspective. Not just how could they get here, because Bethesda could write their way around that, but how will they interact with the settlers and the raiders? I'm gonna assume that Bethesda's not going to delete those two big new factions just six months after they got released. But will the Brotherhood have their own base somewhere else? Will they agree with the settlers and the raiders? Or are they just not gonna really interact at all? Even further, one of the things Bethesda really talked about when adding in Wastelanders content was sometimes it's hard to maintain the original story while adding in a ton of new content. There's certain NPCs, certain locations, you can't really change that much because it's important for the OG story. Now Bethesda will have that twofold. Assuming Wastelanders doesn't get new lands, the Brotherhood of Steel have to somehow fit in while still maintaining the old story, while maintaining the Wastelander story, and now adding a third story on top. So I wonder if we finally see expansion into new lands with this one. In the AMA, they said that's something they're considering, and this seems like where they would be considering it. Tomorrow, I'm gonna have a full video breaking down the return of the Brotherhood, how it will look from a lore perspective, what they could do with it exactly, but overall, this definitely gets me excited for the future of Fallout 76. If this really does all come out in 2020, it's going to be a packed year, and hopefully a lot of this content starts to deliver. The game's in a decent state right now, some of the bugginess and other exploit issues are still there, but the new content that came with Wastelanders was really good, and it seems like Bethesda is sticking to the PTS, it's still active right now, so hopefully all of these new content additions will also be pretty good. Either way though, as always again, I thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this video informative. I would love to hear from all of you. What did you think about this roadmap and what's on the horizon in the comments down below? But until next time, I thank you all again for watching and I hope to see you all later.